Hey, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Chloe and I used to love Copperberg. The cider, you know, you got the strawberry and lime and they used to be that really nice Christmassy one that you could drink warm or cold, but I found out they weren't vegan, which is very sad. However, the quarter leg is, so I'm just sipping down on one of these on New Year's Eve. <laughs> we aren't actually doing anything or going out, but I thought I'd still have a little bevy, so anyway. As you can see behind me, this is what the video is going to be. I've decided to do a phase, hate, and also an eh, or the is of 2017. For me personally, and also not products that have come out 2017, because I probably couldn't even tell you when most of this stuff launched, but the stuff that I have bought and tried in 2017. Let me know what you think about this. I love when I see that in the back of people's videos, especially when they put like, the name of the video on it, I just think it's, I think it's real cool. <laughs> so, yes, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. I just wanna start, actually, by saying that I ham, 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 ham. I am wearing a few products on my face that aren't in this video, even if I do really like them, and that is because I got quite a, quite a bit of makeup for Christmas, but I, I haven't used it enough to either love or hate it. I mean, I, I guess I only have to use, I don't hate any of it, but I haven't used any of them enough to, to love them yet. So I didn't want to include them, even though I've put them on maybe like three times, because I just thought, it's not fair, it's not a fair test. I mean, most of the stuff I'm putting in is because I reach for it a lot, and if I reach for it a lot, obviously I love it. So that's why a few of those aren't in this video, even though, you know, I do like them. I'm gonna start with my hates because there's only two. It's the category with the least things in it, so I feel like if I go from least to most, it's gonna make more sense. So, the first thing that I hated this year first was this sleek Matte Me lipstick. I haven't tried the other colours, for obvious reasons. I bought this, I was looking for like a, you know, like a berry, winey red, and this is in Vino Tinto? Vino Tinto? I don't know. And I picked it up and I was like, that's so pretty, it's such a nice colour, I'm going to buy that. And I tried it, and I'm one of those people, and I, I want to be one now, I'm going to try and be one now, where when I buy a product, the first time I test it, I'm usually doing my makeup to go out. I never like get home and then try it out and be like, oh, do I like this? I'm like, right, let's put this on and, and go out and see loads of people. So I did that and I somehow managed to make it work. That's a lie, actually, no. It looked disgusting, it looked terrible. It came off within like an hour, it crumbled. Putting it on was really hard because it was really patchy. Like on the first coat, that not, that happens with like, you know, cheaper liquid lipstick. So I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just like, you know, pop another layer on top. But it just doesn't not get patchy. And like, I can just see my lip. I wouldn't even say it's not pigmented because you can see the color. The color's there, it's just, it's just horrible. And then when it dries down, it goes like wrinkly. You know when your lips just go, like you can see all the lines, but like more lines than you actually have. At least more than I thought I had. And it just went, the more I put on to obviously sort it out, the more dry and crackly it got. And I was just like, screw this product. Screw it, I don't like it and I don't want it. And the second one I don't actually own anymore. It was that bad, I binned it. However, it is on video evidence. It was one of my, I think it was like my third video, if you watched. It was my first cruelty free video and I bought a full face of cruelty free makeup and <laughs> this concealer, I think it was MUA's concealer, it was, it was a quid and I put it on my under eye and I, I wouldn't even say I waited that long because I'm not one of those people that you know like oh if you leave it there longer you get more coverage blah 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 I just want the, I want the concealer to have the coverage anyway so I don't have to do that and I hadn't had it there that long and I went to blend it and it was just dry it was just dried there and I couldn't blend it you could see where it was and I was just gobsmacked I'll try and insert a little clip if I can do that can you see this? it was ridiculous it was horrible and even though it was just a pound like, some of MUA's stuff that's, you know, a quid is actually quite good, like their lip liners. I'm not personally gonna go out and spend 16 quid on a lip liner, no matter how good it is, because it's a lip liner. So I buy MUA's ones, so I can have like all the colours, and they're a quid, and they do their job, they do what they're supposed to do. But this concealer was just horrible, it was just so bad. So that was it for the hates, they're the only, the only two things I tried in 2017 where I went, no. Absolutely not. I'm not, not even gonna, 
deal with you. I'm not even gonna give you a second chance that, that they were that bad. So onto my is, onto my is. <laughs> I've got three products and I think most people are gonna be surprised by, the, by these products. But the first one is my NYX Vivid Brights Eyeliner. I know a few people either really, really love these or actually hate them. I, however, am a bit on the fence and I'll tell you why. If you try and use this the way you use like normal liquid eyeliner, you try and do like a wing, and especially if you use a lot of it, if you layer it up, because you kind of have to layer up if you use it like that, it cracks. It goes really, really dry and it cracks and you can just see this pink wing on your eyelid that's got cracks in it and it's just not nice. When I first used this and that happened, I was like, oh my God, that is terrible because I've really wanted colorful eyeliners. I'm so upset, I'm never using this again. And it went into my metaphorical hate pile. But then I was doing a look and I wanted like two little pink hearts under my eyes. So I was like, I'll give this a go. We'll see, we'll see how bad it is. And it seems that this, if you use this like, like if you dot it, it doesn't crack. If you you know, do little hearts, if you do like one line here and there, it doesn't crack. I don't know if it's because you're using less of it, because obviously when you do a wing, you're trying to perfect it, so you're doing it over and over and over again, whereas with, with dots, you do it once and it's there and it's done. With a heart, you just do two lines, it's done. And so, I actually bought another one of these the other day. I bought the yellow one, and I bought it because I wanna do more artsy looks, you know, with like different colored eyeliner, and they're actually really, really good for that. So. If you've tried these before and you're like, you know, you did a wing and you're like, oh my god, that is, that is horrible, I'm never using this again. Pick it up, do a few dots, do a heart, do a star, do something, and you'll find that they're actually really, really good for that. And I think maybe that's what they were meant for, maybe they're more like artsy kind of eyeliners. Okay, the second one, which I think most people are going to be quite surprised by, is the Milani Concealer and Perfect Foundation, the two-in-one, it's a foundation and concealer. So I actually did a video on this, testing, and it hasn't gone up. Don't know if I'm gonna put it up, just because obviously now I've said this, and in the video I actually really liked it, and I said, oh, I really like this, this is great, blah, blah, blah. And it's not horrible, because I don't hate it. It's really nice, the coverage is nice. I wouldn't say it's a concealer, I wouldn't use it as a concealer. It's a really weird one, it kind of, not hurts, it kind of like irritates my skin, but like not like visibly. When I wear this and take it off, it's not like my skin has blown up or come out in a rash or spots or you know anything like that. It's when it's wet, when it's on my face, when I've just put it on, just patted it on, I'm about to do my powder or my concealer. It's like all around like the center of my face is kind of irritated and it feels like it would be rashy. And because of that, I've kind of avoided it a little bit. And it's quite sad because it is a, it is, it's a nice foundation, but I just, I don't know, I just don't like that sensation. When I put something on my face and it hurts, I'm kind of like, I don't know how much I want to use you now. And I even started mixing it because I mix a lot of my foundations to get like the perfect match. Even when I started doing that, it would still be there. So I'm just, I don't know, I'm a bit scared of it. Um, please let me know because I know another friend that has this. I haven't asked her yet and I will ask her, but. Let me know if you've got this and it does the same or, or anything, just because it, it might just be me. Um, just because I've never heard of it before. I mean, most people rave about this on YouTube. That's the only reason I bought it, because people say it's so good and such high coverage and it's, it's cheap. And then it hurts my face, so I'm a bit, hmm, what's wrong with me? Anyway, the next one I think people will be fairly surprised by, but not as surprised as the foundation, is my Barry M. Uh, the liquid drops, the highlighter drops, the liquid <laughs> the liquid chrome highlighter drops and these are really nice I use them every day, I'm wearing them today under a highlight I'm actually wearing the, I got the Jouer powder highlighter in to rose quartz yes rose quartz so I'm wearing that on top so I really like these however I don't think they pack as much as a punch as I thought they would I really thought I would be wearing these and nothing and I just love them, and obviously this is the only one I've got. I don't know if this might be too dark for me. This is Beam Me Up? Yeah, Beam Me Up. The other two that were lighter had a pink or purple shift to them, and although I do like those kind of highlighters, I don't want to wear them every day, so I thought I'd go with this one first, try this out. I put it, especially like on top of foundation and, and all that, I, you know, I pop it on and, and do all this, but I'm always just like, it's not enough for me at least. You know, I quite like my highlighter to be like this and I always have to put powder on top of this to get that. So that's the last of my 
is this. So to start off my, my loves of 2017, the products I used so much and most of them are on my face right now. <laughs> so this is a range called Naturally Radiant from Superdrug and I've got the Refreshing Complete Cleanser, the 2-in-1 Moisture and Serum and the Brightening Eye Cream. I also have, I can't find it right now, my desk is a mess, but I have like a glycolic peel from the same range. This range is so great. The first thing I ever got was this cleanser and this is actually my second one, it lasts quite a while and it's kind of like a foamy cleanser. The reason I love this cleanser so much, I've, quite, I've used quite a few cleansers and they've been okay, I'm just like, yeah, it's alright. This cleanser is so good because not only does it say what it does on the bowl, this is so good at removing makeup, like, I'm not even kidding. I, the face I've got on today, full face, everything, probably even this glitter, I haven't tried it yet, but I will. It just removes it, all of it, gone, and it's just amazing because there's so many other brands that do that, but they're a bit more expensive and, like, they kind of only do that, like, you buy a product to take your makeup off and then that's what it does however this also so it says and I think it says it on all of the products awakens skin's natural glow and that's what the whole kind of product range does I'm not lying when I say that it's amazing because I wake up in the morning I've got a mirror right in front of my bed and I wake up in the morning I've got the natural light of the the window shining on me and I, if I kind of go like this I can see like a natural glow on my cheeks and I'm always just sitting there like oh, it's lovely and I've never had that before until I started using these products. So more skincare, my Pixi Glow Tonic. I use this every night and every morning. I went through a period where I think I'd done, what did, oh I had sunburn on my face and it says not to use you know glycolic acid and stuff on broken skin or you know like burnt, it doesn't say not on burnt skin but I knew it just wouldn't go down well if I started using glycolic acid on top of burnt skin. So I didn't use it for a few days and my skin like just, it was horrible. <laughs> Obviously the dryness would have come from the, the burn as well, but places where I weren't burnt was also kind of drying up and just not, not being very nice, it just didn't look good. I just love this shit, it's so good and I know like every YouTuber raves about this stuff, which is the reason I obviously picked it up and tried it, but I'm not kidding, it's so good. Let me know if, you, if you've got it and you also agree, or let me know if you hate it, because I would be very interested as to why. And then for the last skincare kind of item is this Mario Badescu's Drying Lotion, which isn't a lotion, so why do you call it a drying lotion? This stuff is basically, remember when you were like a bit younger when you were a teenager and, and you somehow heard from someone that if you put toothpaste on your spots it would dry them out? Even though sometimes it did, it would end up going all flaky and gross. It's kind of like that, but doesn't go flaky and gross, unless you're not looking after your skin, which you should be doing. This stuff is amazing. I get spots every day, a new spot every day. Every night I will pop this on it, and the next day it's either gone, or hugely, hugely smaller. That it's either just, you know, barely, barely there, or just, you know, small enough that I can cover it. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for it. So yes, that's another one of my skincare favourites. And that's the skincare done. So I'll move on to brushes, because I've only got two. I know I rave about my eyeshadow brushes a lot. They are really, really good. However, not that I don't love them, but I feel like you can buy very similar brushes to the ones I have. So I didn't bother putting, you know, my G17 in like, oh, this fluffy brush is great, because you can get fluffy brushes from anywhere. It just so happens that mine is the Morphe G17. The two brushes I did include were my Morphe G30. And I think I've spoke about this before. It's my contour brush. And even though I didn't struggle with contouring anyway, this has just made contouring that much easier. I never ever have to do, you know that thing where people bake underneath to get that crisp line? I already have that crisp line. Look at that. Look at that line. It's, it's so good because I just kind of, you know, I'll swipe it and then blend up. Kind of blend this way as well. Up, back, up. you know, anything you want. And it's just, it's really, really good for getting those really nice crisp lines. And the second brush is my Kat Von D, I think it's the concealer brush number something. Edge Concealer Brush 40. And it's a concealer brush, but I don't use it for concealer. I use this to contour my nose. It's great at con contouring my nose. I believe it was Jordi, it's Likely Makeup, that was contouring her nose with this. So I bought one, and it's just, it's really, really good at contouring you know, getting those real tight lines. So that's the brushes done. My first makeup piece is actually the NYX Color Correcting Palette. I spoke about this a little while ago, I think I did like a Primark haul and other bits. 
and I went to Boots and bought this for like a tenner. I got the green, a yellow, a pink, a purple, and then two kind of like contouring slash bronzing, celo, depending on your, your skin tone. But you know, I got all these extras. And as you can see, they're quite loved, except for this one. <laughs> Haven't used this one once. But especially the pink, you know, I use that a lot for my under eyes. But I've also started putting purple under my eye as well, just because it kind of brightens it up a bit. I just, I just love this so much. It covers so well and blends really well, but also just, it's really good at covering. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of this colour corrector and I really, really think that you should invest in it if, if you colour correct. I think it's definitely a good investment. The next product is my LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation. I bought this on a whim because I was on Beauty Bay buying some stuff. I needed to get to 50 quid to get the next day delivery or something, so I was like, this was 11 pounds, and I was like, just throw it in, just throw it in the basket. And I've actually been really, really liking it. It's got really good coverage. I'm wearing it today mixed with my Kat Von D Locket foundation. At the moment this is a bit dark for me. I was wearing this when I got off of holiday and I was tanned. Is my, this is supposed to be fair and I'm pretty sure it was either the lightest or second lightest they did. It was 11 quid. 11 quid for a foundation like this, you can't moan. It's, it's just really nice, I, just, I really like it. So the next thing I don't think anyone will be surprised by because it's just, you know, it's been on everyone's lips this year and I'm just not, I'm not surprised and I think so many people just, you know, they go crazy about this and is the Shape Tape Concealer. I have not personally used a lot of concealers. My favourite concealer used to be the Maybelline's Under Eye one, but obviously I went quarter free so I'm not using that shit anymore. And I just love it so much, the coverage on it and, and the, you know, it never ever creases on me and it's just, it's amazing. I'm so in love with it and I'm so upset that Tarte don't sell in the UK and if you haven't tried it yet, I really highly suggest you do, obviously, you're probably from the UK, and I know you're probably like, not willing. Be willing, it's so good. So then the next thing is probably gonna be this. And this is my current contour shade, or contour product. And this is Makeup Geek's individual contour pans, and this is in Breakup. And it's got so much pigmentation in it, just one swipe of that brush and it's all there. Sometimes even a bit too much, and I'm like, oh, go away. And it's just, it's a really, really good product. And it was like seven quid, and I know that's like, some people would find it expensive because obviously you can get contour palettes from the drugstore for like a tenner and it's got loads and loads of colours in but I had one of them and I found I just weren't using most of the little pans anyway so I really recommend this product. Okay I've got two more products left and I'm gonna go for the blush. My favourite blush is the Revolution blush. I'm not gonna lie I only have two blushes and since I went quarter free I've only had two blushes. <laughs> Because I'm not really a blush girl, I mean I do wear blush every time I wear makeup but I very rarely go over to blushes when I'm shopping for makeup and you know start swatching them and being like oh that one's nice, oh that one's nice. I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I want a pink. But this blush is just so nice and it's, it's a pound, it's a pound and it's so pigmented. It's just really really nice and I really like the colour, this is Treat by the way. So then the last product I'm going to be talking about isn't makeup, but it's a makeup applicator. This is my Revolution Teardrop Silicon Sponge. And I know these have been all the rage this year. Obviously, Scylla Sponge came out with the original, and then loads of brands copied it. Revolution is one of them. I really like the whole silicon sponge thing. I know a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people say that it's just, you know, it just piles up their makeup and it doesn't look great. I put, I think, probably a bit more than half on my face and I found that it just works so well at that and it, especially with high coverage foundations the, the last thing you want with a high coverage foundation is using a sponge that's going to suck up all that product and then you're like, where's my coverage gone? why can I see everything? why can I see all the colours on my face? this isn't what I wanted you use one of these, paint in your face you're literally painting it and I just I'm so happy with this and I use it every single time I do my makeup. Sometimes I do go overboard, but the best thing to do is just get your beauty blender and lightly tap over your face because then it will take the excess, but not as much as it would if you used it to apply that foundation. There's a lot of people that don't like them because of the reasons I said, but if you have another reason, if you just think that, you know, you feel stupid slapping basically a fillet on your face, then, you know, that is fair enough. I would be really interested to see if someone, you know, has used the products I hate and love them, use the products I love and hates them, use the products that I think, eh, and they also think, eh, but had a different reason. Just because it's interesting and I'm nosy and I just really want to know what you think about everything. So, yes. 
that was the end of my video and I will see you next year. Bye!